So in this podcast, we're going to be looking into the structure and function of the membrane um, that surrounds the cell. So you've already looked at all of the organelles. We don't go into any much, much more detail on the organelles except for the cell membrane um, for very specific reasons because we're going to talk about how things get across this cell membrane um, and we're going to be doing a lab on that. And so we need to first figure out what is the structure and the function of the cell membrane. So here's a couple diagrams of a phospholipid that is contained within the cell membrane that you have already seen. We talked about these when we talked about the organic molecules. We talked about the phospholipids as different from the triglycerides in that this head region has a phosphate group and the glycerol group, um, and this tail region here contains those hydrocarbons. So we looked at the structure already of a phospholipid. Remember that we said that this head region, this head region here was um, a polar end and the tail region was a non-polar end, which created these pop properties of the head regions being hydrophilic. Here's all of those heads here. And the tail regions on the inside here, these are the hydrophobic regions. We're gonna talk a little bit more about what that looks like and um, what that create, how that creates a cell membrane in a few slides. I'm going to come back to um, a couple slides that look like this, but this is generally what the structure of a cell, mem cell membrane will look like. Here you can see these large molecules here, the purple ones that are all sticking up inside and spanning the membrane. Some of them don't span the membrane. There's a couple here that are not spanning the membrane. These are proteins. Um, proteins are contained within the phospholipid bilayer. What you might also see here is that this is the inside of the cell. This is the outside of the cell. What you can see here, these is this is your cytoskeleton that um, basically anchors organelles to the cell membrane. We're also gonna talk about a few other things. Um, we're gonna talk about these molecules here, cholesterol molecules. We're gonna talk about these carbohydrate chains as well. Um, but this is typically a structure of the phospholipid bilayer that I'm gonna keep on coming back to. So when describing the functions of a cell membrane, I want you to think of the cell membrane as the outside of anything, in meaning that we can consider any outer surface a membrane. So for example, if we're considering our school, we can consider the outside of our school as a membrane, as a barrier that is provided to separate the inside from the outside. So in that sort of analogy, think of the cell membrane as its ability to provide a barrier separating the inside from the outside. Um, what the cell membrane also does is it provides structure and support. So it provides structure in that it gives it the cell its shape, um, as well as support because it allows things to move in and out of the cell. So it provides structure and support. Um, and also, as I just mentioned, it regulates substances that enter and exit the cell. So it regulates substances um, that enter or exit. Enter that enter or exit the cell. Sorry, a little bit slow there. Um, and this way it acts as the gatekeeper. So it's just like our school. The doors, for example, would allow certain people, things, to enter or exit the cell. So when you're thinking about the cell membrane, don't be so scientific about it. Just think, okay, it's function, it's the outside. What do all outside of um, any structure, um, what does the outside of any structure do? So here's how the cell membrane is usually described. It's described as a fluid mosaic model. Now, if you break down those terms, fluid is talking about um, the ability of things to move. How liquefied is something? And it's because of these phospholipids that are here um, that is actually quite a fluid membrane. Um, and these phospholipids are constantly moving, allowing things to almost float along the top of the surface, allowing things to slightly shift within the fluid mosaic model. The mosaic piece to it is that we have proteins, these proteins here that are bobbing up and down throughout, moving side to side um, within this um, fluid bilayer. So this is usually described as a phospholipid fluid mosaic model. And so um, a typical te test question would ask you to describe what that means. And you would state that it's a mosaic of protein molecules bobbing in a fluid bilayer of phospholipids. <laughs> 
So let's come back to reviewing um, this phospholipid structure here that we called the previously the dancing heads. So my first question would be, what is this made of? And if I just give you this diagram, you can see what it's made of here. And here is this group that we would normally just have a circle around and we just have a P in here. This is the phosphate group. So this is the head region of a phospholipid um, and it is made of the phosphate group. Now that phosphate group, um, we call this the polar head. And these bottom pieces down here, the tail region, um, you can see here that they are made of hydrocarbons. So this is the tail and it is the hydrocarbons and we call these the nonpolar portion of a phospholipid. So these are nonpolar regions of the phospholipid. So if you remember back when we looked at the properties of water and we realized that water is a polar molecule and in the lab we did some experiments in which we showed that like dissolved like, that the like would mix with other like substances. So when this phospholipid is replaced is placed in water, what happens is that this nonpolar region, this nonpolar region right here, the tail region of the phospholipid, these are going to turn in. And so these are our hydrophobic areas. They are nonpolar. So this means water hating. So this doesn't want to be anywhere near water. Whereas in the head regions, these are hydrophilic. So hydrophilic. Philic means loving. So this loves water. So hydrophilic. And this means water loving. And so what happens when you place these phospholipids into any aqueous environment, in water for example, the hydrophilic regions are going to stay on the outside of the cell's membranes. So, and the hydrophobic regions are going to turn in on themselves. This is what creates this bilayer because these tails don't want to be anywhere near water where these head regions are hydrophilic. They love being near water. And so therefore it creates these two layers. So here are our two layers. Here's our layer one of the bilayer. Here's our layer two. And this is what creates this phospholipid bilayer, separating the outside of the cell from the inside of the cell. So we've looked at the structure of the phospholipid and talked about its hydrophilic regions um, here and its hydrophobic regions here that creates this bilayer. Well, we also need to talk about the other components that are within the plasma membrane. So looking at um, the proteins, and these are all these red ones, these red shapes here. Um, proteins can span the membrane and some of them actually do not fully span the membrane but are just embedded in the membrane. So we have a few different ones listed here. For example, um, we could have a carrier protein which would be for example to transport sodium and potassium across the membrane. Now that's really important in the nervous system. When we come to the nervous system you're going to have to know that one very well. But here's another example. This one right here. This is a channel um, a channel protein. And so what a channel protein does is it just allows certain ions or molecules to pass through. So in that way, the membrane is still acting as a gatekeeper, only allowing some molecules or ions to come through um, and some to exit. Um, another example here is these proteins here. These proteins we called glycoproteins. And here's the definition up here. Glycoproteins. Here is a carbohydrate chain that's attached to this protein and it will be used for cell recognition. Um, we also have receptor proteins. Now this one would be a good example of a receptor protein in that it will receive a molecule or an ion and cause a secondary reaction to occur. So that's just some examples of functions of proteins that are very important within the cell membrane. So I just touched on um, this portion of the cell membrane right here, this carbohydrate portion. So what carbohydrates do, um, they allow the cell to be recognized itself as itself. So we've already talked about how in the ABO blood typing that all those people who have blood type A will have the same type of carbohydrate on the outside of their cell. Um, and that's involved in an immune system response. If it, it deems that cell to not belong to the body, it will have immune system response. So I'm going to break down. There's two different types of carbohydrates. And the next slide, I'm going to tell you what those two are.
Okay, so there are two types of carbohydrates that we need to talk about, one of which is a glycolipid. Now, before I dissect down what that um, actually, where that actually is, I've just drawn off to the side here an example. So glyco is referring to the carbohydrate. So if it's glyco with a lipid, it's a carbohydrate attached to a lipid. If it's glyco protein, it's a carbohydrate attached to a protein. So here's an example of a glycolipid. You can see there, there's the, there's the carbohydrate chain and it's attached to a phospholipid. So we would call that a glycolipid. Whereas a glycoprotein is the carbohydrate, glyco, attached to a protein. And that we call a glycoprotein. Remember that these are macromolecules and therefore they are covalently bonded together. The last component of the cell membrane that I want to talk about is cholesterol. Now normally when we hear the term cholesterol we have associated with being something bad because people now have high cholesterol levels which can lead to clogged arteries and hence leads to strokes um, or uh, heart attacks. But cholesterol is actually a main component, an essential component of the cell membrane. So I'm going to draw some circles around some cholesterol that is found within the cell membrane. So all these little yellow pieces here. This is cholesterol. So what cholesterol does is that it reduces the membrane's fluidity. Remember we said that these phospholipids, they are a fluid mosaic model. So these are constantly moving. It is literally like pressing on the surface of, um, say for example, if the water had a slight membrane, these would be able to move in that sort of manner. And so what this these cholesterol molecules do is they stop the phospholipids from moving so freely to stiffen it up a little bit. And it also stops the membrane from becoming solid at room temperature because it maintains a certain fluidity. It doesn't allow it to be too fluid, but at the same time doesn't allow it to be solid. So those are the main components of a cell membrane. Let's do a quick review. So we've talked about the phospholipid and its hydrophilic head and its hydrophobic tails. And when placed in, a, in water, they turn in on themselves, creating that bilayer, two layers of phospholipids. Um, we also talked about proteins. And proteins have many different functions. They act as carrier molecules. They act as uh, transport molecules. And they also allow for certain molecules to be received by the cell and cause secondary reactions. We also talked about um, these carbohydrate chains, glycoproteins, if they're attached to proteins, and glycolipids, if they're attached to a lipid molecule, that um, serve as the function to recognize the cell as self. The last one we talked about was cholesterol, and that cholesterol helps reduce the fluidity of those um, phospholipids so that the cell isn't too fluid, but also doesn't allow the cell um, to become solid at room temperature. So next we're going to be talking about how the cell membrane is selectively permeable, meaning that it doesn't allow everything to come in and out of the cell. It selects specific things, and a lot of it is because of these proteins that allow, that allow the selection process. Um, so we call that selectively permeable. It only selects certain things to pass through its permeability. So we're going to start talking about all types of transport that happen through the cell membrane um, after we finish our microscope lab.